Talk. Now, another offering from the Stand Up Talk Radio Network. Crime is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers. With his overly peppy and on the nose assistant, John Shevsky. Oh, yeah. Ta, 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 ta. I'm very happy that I was able to afford you. <laughs> What's that mean? I mean, you're so expensive. Uh, is that some sort of racist thing? Like, probably. As if I was, like, some sort of Mexican probably guy racist. that you couldn't afford? This guy's racist. We probably gotta, racist. We got to play the music. Play the music. Crime is the show that starts now. Like, right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send... Don't send it. Me. Don't you dare. Podcast at gmail.com. Don't you send it. Label it John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. Hi, racists <laughs> and or criminals. Whatever you're into. Racist criminals. If you like racism and or criminals. That'd be a better show than ours. Fuck, we got to start a new podcast. Yeah, racism. Racist criminals. Racist criminals. Racist criminals. You, you mean can... just my childhood? That's going <laughs> to... What? I grew up in Northern California. It's like oh, surrounded right. by racist criminals. Everywhere surrounded by we'll racist do, criminals. We'll, we'll do at least one or two episodes about my experiences with that. Don't okay, you worry. Cool. Okay, cool. If you do like racism and or criminals or neither of those things, you can support this show in a number of great ways. The best, tell your friends about it. Please, spread Spread the word. Seriously, tell your friends about it. Please, I got to get my brakes done in my car. Please. It's out of control. Number two is you can give us a nice review and a five-star rating on iTunes. Please, do that. That'd be so cool. Also, And those of you that have, thank you. Yeah, for real. You got to thank the people that have. Also, the guy who gave us a one-star review, thank you just for showing up, just for being in in the game, to be honest. That's Rich speaking because he's a hippie, but I'm like, man, why would you just judge us so harsh on our comedy? But that's that's. I mean, the the stars I don't like, (laughs) the review was very accurate, though. What did it say? It was just like ju- like randomness and juvenile humor. I was like, yeah, okay, that's pretty much the show. Yeah, but I... I <laughs> yeah, it's okay, though. Oh, you know what? Just support us on Patreon. We have a bunch Please. of cool stuff on there. The I bonus need new episodes. brakes on my car. You can you sign scripts of the show, the poster you haven't designed yet. You know, pretty cool stuff. Oh, there's great stuff on there. And thanks, Teresa, for listening for so long, too. My friend, Teresa. Today, I'm time. really excited. I think Chef's is pretty excited. Oh, yeah. Uh, our guest... Uh, as, a, as a fellow comedian here at the Comedy Store, Hilarious. one of San Diego's greatest exports, uh, please welcome to the show, Hassan Mahmoud! Oh man, I'm excited to be here. Uh, Fuck yeah! I'm very racist and I want to be a criminal, so I think I'll fit in. <laughs> oh, you're going right to learn today. Zone. Yeah. Uh, this is, this, I'm taking notes on this as we go. Just be like, oh, this is what I should do. Just a plan? Yeah, just a plan. Your you fallback know? from I comedy? I hope this show doesn't yeah. create criminals. I hope this creates people that get amused by the crime but learn their own lessons without having to do the bad stuff. I hope we create one good like con man criminal that we can then turn back in an episode of the show. And then maybe turn around and straighten their life out? Because like I don't the think twist, it's worth it. The twist at like page page seven is that he started listening to the show. Yeah. And then suddenly... And then we're in the show, and then we're that reading about it. That would very much vindicate the show, is yeah. if you guys created a criminal that you can then talk about. But then that would, we'd be that contributing... That should be the goal. But that's what we'd be contributing to the world, is a show that helped a criminal get created? I don't want to do that. I don't want to be the comic book that Hitler well, what read. If we also, what if we also inspire the cop who catches that criminal? Oh my God! Dun, dun, You're dun. such an optimist. That's I know. why sometimes up, your dude? religious people are really onto something. So, Johan so... Flamang Schrank. Oh, so, no, I love don't... it already. This <laughs> is good. <laughs> don't make up names here. Yeah. Flamang Schrank, turn around and face your enemy. Was born on March fifth, eighteen seventy six, in the farming village of Erding, Bavaria, now part of Germany. These are all crazy names already. I like this. Yeah. What's his name again? Johan Flamang Schrank from What's Erding. It? What's up? I'm Johan from Mang Schmank from Erding. Oh, what are you doing here? I, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself and uh, kind of make it be known that, uh, you know, I'm here. All right. Put my know. flag in the moon. I I'm just like here you. in case anybody could tell me how to spell my own name. I'm kind of struggling with I it. I think Johan is a Y O, at least the beginning. No, it's a J. It's a J. It's, it's a J. German. Yeah. It's a J. J O H A N F L E M I N G S H A A A A N K. Close enough. Johan dealt with loss from a young age. When his father died of consumption, he was buried next to two of Johan's siblings who were already passed away. What did he die from? Consumption? Consumption. Just ate Tuberculosis. Other siblings. Yeah, That's every, what happened. I've heard consumption before, I think, on this show, but I always just think of like, he the, ate The stuff? Christiana yeah. Edmonds episode with the... Oh, no, no. The, um, Don't call back to other episodes. No, it's but we've rude. already released that one now. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, people know that one. No, no. You know what it was? It was the, the doctor one that we did with Dana and O'Neill. The shitty doctor. Yeah. Whatever. I just, just I want to hear consumption. Don't go into Wait, a long what, story. What happened to consumption? Yeah. I feel like that's a cool thing to die we from. We figured it out. That's really? It used to kill a quarter of all people on the planet. Really? Like in, in the oh, 200 year span, it killed over a billion people. And then we were like, oh, we know how this works now and stopped it. Oh, 
was so sick. Why do they call it consumption, though? Because it, like like, it, it, it would make so your body you waste sick. away. Yeah, it consumes you. Johan's mother struggled to raise the remaining children. Eventually, it was decided that Johan would have a better life if he left Germany. So the <laughs> That's so we have indigestion. This is a fucking podcast, man. <laughs> Clear that the, shit up before you come on. That's such a bad home life for even your mom to be like, you're better off without me. Yeah. yeah. Just so get the, out of here, kid. So the family put 12-year-old John Schrank on a boat to America. Oh, nice. They exported oh, him over they here. They his name up, too. That's, oh, yeah. That's oh, no. very smart. Well, it's it's Johan still, but it will be John. Don't you worry. Oh, okay. what? That's okay. smart. That's we the... have a rule, though. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Wait, it'll, it'll, it'll get paid off. Don't you worry. Just hold on. Okay. It'll get paid I off. I just want to make sure you keep it simple <laughs> so Unlike we know the Unlike many of his young contemporaries, Johan was lucky enough to have relatives waiting for him on his arrival in the States. His aunt and uncle, unable to have children of their own, happily cared for their nephew, treating him as if he were their own. Oh, this is a We sweet can't story. spell our names, too, Johan. Come yeah. over. Hey, Johan, should make him a dank. You're He's... my kid, kind of. He spent most of his time working in his uncle's tavern, cleaning tables and hauling buckets of beer to nearby apartments. And how old was he at the time? Twelve. Stuff? Nice, nice. But in those days, that's what you drank, though. It was like beer, you know. Right, like, and oh, you just got yeah. kids to deliver them. Oh, that's yeah. what you did. No, yeah. like my grandpa's job at uh, in this time period, I think in like nineteen prohibition, whatever. Here we my go. grandpa's job my was grandpa to stories. empty out slot machines from like illegal slot machines from gambling dens. Yeah. Uh, and one of the ones he was emptying out, like it was for the mob. He was all, it was all working. See, for... that's what you got to make kids do. Like, live, let, let them live real world shit. You know what I mean? Like, how much more prepared for the world would I be if in middle school I just also worked at an opium den? Well, the, the only problem is that once you worked at the opium den, we're like, all right, now come over here and be an engineer and help us, you know, build this building. You're like, hell no, that doesn't pay enough, and I want my opium. Right. True we... story. Four out of the six kids from the Wire are now CEOs. Really? No. Mm. Oh, I, I. You know, God. Dang it! He always gets me. New I York had a like, thriving really? German population, many of whom had yeah. fought for the North in the Civil War. Nah. Johann spent hours listening to the patrons talk, which not only helped his English, but also gave root to a deep-seated sense of patriotism. Oh, he became oh, like a happy God. American? Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, those immigrants that love America, man. Oh, uh, yeah. No one loves America more, so this guy's going to be crazy. God bless yeah. That's the best part, is the immigrants who are like, I am the most American-American of all Americans. And I'm a criminal. I'm a criminal. Say hello to my little friend, huh? It reminds me of someone else. Johan loved his new country. He even changed his name to John. A With an H? Mm-hmm. That's J-O-H-N. Oh, man, he... Not, really, G he's, not he's, Jewish. Yeah. He's obviously. sold out, though. Yeah, he loves his country. Yeah. yeah. Still, which means in those days he hated the Jews. So. Probably. Right? <laughs> A fitting tribute to founding father John Adams. Oh. He developed a love of poetry and his hero, <laughs> Out of all the George founding Washington. fathers to choose. John Adams. John Adams. Yeah. Mr. One-term president. So now are we... <laughs> was he a one-term president? Yeah. Was he really bad or did he just like just not get the votes because he was too uh, cool? He said that he was going to make unpopular decisions to help save the country and he made unpopular decisions yeah. to help save the country. And everyone and was like, we didn't like that because yeah. it was the wrong, the unpopular decision. Yeah, like get him out of here. Do you Turns out gonna... voting is all about popularity. Who fucking what? saw that? Yeah. I still just think that they fake it. I'm like, they just fake it. July 23rd, 18, or 1887. Ooh. John Flamang Schrank took his oath and officially became an American citizen. I'm here now. <laughs> Hear me roar. My name is John. God bless America. I'm a German guy named John Schrank. A few years later, he began dating a young woman named Elsie Ziegler. Hell yeah. A 17-year-old factory worker who lived Ooh, in his building. She's yeah. got strong arms. <laughs> and she works. in the 1800s. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 17, working at a factory, lifting shit. How about an HJ? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They planned to save up some money and get married. John was living the American dream. Oh, man. White picket fence. 17-year-old girlfriend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else could you ask I for? I mean, that's what all that's all what that's what all immigrants want. Right. Really. That's what my parents taught me. That's right. You gotta get a 17-year-old German buckets factory worker. That actually yeah. sounds really hot. I don't want to sound like a perv, but I do want to be honest. That sounds really hot. A 17-year-old German factory worker? Call me Kurt Vonnegut. Let's do this. Until Oh fuck. I knew this wouldn't last. Tragedy struck New York City on the morning of June 15th, 1904. Is this when the towers hit? Ah, 615. Who could forget? 615. 615? That was 9 That was that was New York's 9 11. Actually, People you got don't, the flu you don't, and they died. You guys could not be more accurate with the, with this reference. This was their 9 11. Oh my god, did someone like like fucking captain boats into buildings? Is that a what happened? 250 foot steamboat. No way. Named General Slocum. Yeah, made its way up the East River, carrying nearly 1,400 people headed to a beautiful picnic ground on Long Island's North Shore. As the boat passed through the Hellgate near Queens, a fire was discovered in the forward compartment. Well, that's just... That just that's happened. really on the nose. But that, this is what happens, though. Because is of there the... Is there a building seven? Is there a building seven? 
Yes. Okay. Boat seven. Because of the rocky shore and treacherous waters, the captain decided to push ahead so the passengers could jump off near a safer beach. But the plan backfired as the winds and forward motion only helped the flames grow stronger. Shipmates tried to fight the fires, only to discover that the fire hoses were rotted through. Oh, oh man. This, this had to have led to regulations. Rotting through the... Okay, so, so they're on this boat. They're going mm-hmm. up the Hudson River, or where are they? Uh, are they actually East in, River. This sounds like a good like setup for a slapstick comedy. Or a Nicole the, Kidman movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, this What's about to happen right now is the saddest Three Stooges episode of all time. I oh mean, everything God. everything they do is like going wrong. Like, oh, we'll try to go this way. Oh, the wind says we go this way. We make the flames higher, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's Let's get the hose. It's broken. This is one yeah. thing about the 1800s. You're going to die. Within minutes, the ship was completely goes. engulfed. Passengers tried to escape, but despite having recently passed safety inspections, the lifeboats were inaccessible, and the cork life jackets had disintegrated. Yeah, how'd they pass the inspection? This is how it was in the old days. Man, (laughs) next thing you know, they're heading straight for a fireworks factory. Like, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Every single thing is wrong. With old-fashioned, like, uh, you know, band music, live band music playing as they're all dying. (laughs) It's like the Kirby Enthusiasm theme song. Pretty much safety at this time was just like, hey, fuck it. Yeah, that's Let's I mean that happens. was the plan. We'll, we'll we'll send this ship through Hell's Gate. Surely it won't catch on fire. No, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Some people burned alive. Oh Jesus, Slayton, you could have left that out. No, Some drowned under the weight of their heavy clothes. What does that mean? Oh, they, like they got in the water and they had those big jackets mm-hmm. on. They're like, hey, oh, oh, oh. Oh, all those like hoop skirts and those big like you know those things that women had to wear. To, yeah, shoes I made shouldn't out of have wood. Worn this dress, glub 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 glub. Oh, my God. Others were crushed by the collapsing ship. This is a crime by nature. Over 1,000 people were killed in one of the biggest civilian maritime disasters in world history. Man, 615. Including Elsie Ziegler. His wife? His young, hot German? His young, hot German girlfriend. <gasps> Damn it. 17-year-olds. Well, yeah. it's a factory. I'm sure you could find more. Sorry, that was in- insensitive. <laughs> yeah. John took the last really hard. He sat by a monument to the victims for hours every day writing poetry. He never dated another girl. Oh, that's wow. so sad. That's, mm-hmm. Would any of us do that? Pussy. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I, say, I say, I love my wife, but you know, you just got to keep going, folks. Yeah, just go to the 17 year old girl factory again. Pick one, pick another I know. one. I'll take that one right there. Uh, which one do you want? We have, we have blonde and we have blonde. Oh, have whichever. Both. All right, blondes. I turned into a Russian guy. We both turned into we Russian both, yeah. guys. Are we German or Russian? Go I don't on. know how to do German, really. Oh. I'm I don't right know here. How- you can talk to me. Oh, oh she's yeah. a hottie. I'll take that one right there. The one with the lazy show eye him, and the blonde hair. Show him your teeth. I can also show you my ankles. Oh, my God. Those ankles are so cankly and pale. Please, sir, stop masturbating on the floor of this factory. It's dangerous. No, this is why I love this country. There's so much equipment. Uh, yeah, oh, my gonna, God. It's growing. Get a couple of, Look get, out. It, but, uh, That's the worst well, penis just, accident I, I, I've ever seen. I just lubed up your... I, no, I just lubed up your sprocket, dude. It's a big factory, Oh, that was right? just a, that was just just a jizz. Out. Oh, man, I thought that it popped. I didn't know there was white stuff, and I thought it was... Uh, I should know what blood looks like better. This is this is why that, that, that commenter said we were immature. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> the German chick leaves. Lock the door. <laughs> Wait right there, milady. <laughs> <laughs> his, Hello? His aunt and uncle passed away in 1919, leaving him their 10-unit building in Yorkville. Oh, damn, things are looking up. And a $13,000 mortgage. Yeah! Whoa, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot of money now. Yeah, I was going to say, right now, then. I'd be tripped out then. Yeah. I'd be like, um, all right, I'm going to have to get into crime. Uh, cry- I, I was late. Yeah, John was alone asshole. and not very good with money. He moved out of his building and sp- into a hotel, spending his days at coffee shops, talking politics, and complaining about his money problems. Oh, man, where does he live? Silver Lake? Uh, the, yeah, the Silver Lake of New York. The Silver Lake of New York. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's also compare. He's complaining about all these, all the other privileges the yeah. guys with wives still have. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah. yeah. Well, oh. wouldn't you though? I mean, you'd just be like, ah. And your wife didn't get burned up in a boat fire. Oh, what? Your wife is sixteen? Oh, fuck you! <laughs> yeah, just because your wife's all young. Oh man, mine's eighteen. She's broken. Wow. Can I get a new one? Yeah, I didn't know you were dating cougars. Shh. They really did objectify women back in the day. Yeah, now they, don't, they don't. don't do it yeah. anymore. Not, not, not anymore. Not anymore. We love bitches. That's right. We trust you know them. What? I gotta say, they're just as good as men. Almost. I think Hillary's doing a great job as president. I so, think so. Yeah. I think we made the right choice. She's what crushing. virtual reality program are you running? John right. got a job as a porter at a bar on Flushing Avenue. What's a porter soon- at a bar? Like a job, some sort of shitty job working at a bar. Oh, like a bar back. I don't know what a, por- I don't know what a porter is. That's I, what the word is. I, I, mm, you know. Sounds like you should have 
Look that up. Yeah, you're so doing. Yeah, your when research. I was writing my three thousand two hundred fifty-seven words, I should have looked that one up. You cunts! I'm out of here. That I can't been... believe you called us cunts. Three hundred two hundred three thousand two hundred eighty words wouldn't have been that much of a difference, would it? Oh <laughs> my god, you're dealing with a real lawyer on the side, huh? Over here, Hassan's not gonna let you get away with shit the way I do. All right, no more, Mister Nice Guy. Okay. But John was soon promoted to lunch man. Ah, uh, man. <laughs> I don't know what that job is either. These are really vague, yeah. I dream every little kid dreams of. I just have a feeling, though, it has something to do with prepping or cleaning up after lunch. What I'm do you want to do one day, Johnny? I'll be a lunch man when I grow up. Oh, you're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great career, and they, people always need lunch. Not anymore, they don't. Attention, attention. Officially, the city of New York has canceled lunch. We now have breakfast, brunch, you fucking supper, asshole. Go on with the dinner, story. midnight snack, Go on no with the story. more lunch. No Man, one's going to get rid of lunch. You already made Johnny's life obsolete. Yeah. That's you're all you wanted. Your improv is unrealistic. There's always going to be lunch. I'm John, speaking for the Germans. Vote for me. Angry, he... Oh, oh he... Oh, no, wait, wait. Uh, he was promoted to lunch man, but he was bad at the job and demoted back to Porter. Hey, lunching is hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. That, 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 that's a great quote right there. Lunching Hashtag is hard. lunching is hard. Lunch, hashtag I mean, lunching people is hard. don't realize it. I accidentally, I remember was, I was in some other city and sent a message to like a, a sort of comedy friend acquaintance to say, hey, we should hang out. And she was like, yeah, let's hang out. I was like, cool. And I meant to say, let's get lunch. And I wrote this, let's lunch. And then the conversation ended right there. And I just felt like a douchebag for the rest of my life. I was like, yeah, we should lunch. Oh, dude, you right? are. Yeah, that's right. You hear that? Thing. Right. If if you're listening right now, don't ever do that to people. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, let's lunch. What are you in a an Albert Brooks movie in the '80s? Yes, and you're in Hollywood. I am right you're now. a screenwriter, and you tell people let's lunch. It's disgusting. I say that all the time. Actually. Yeah, you should feel bad about yourself. Right? I say angry. He quit and demanded his full this. week's wages. That's that, that is how you quit. That's though. ballsy. Yeah, yeah. To demand money for work you haven't done. Yeah, that's that's, that's very Congress of him. That's how you well, survive. In you this know what? Town. I'll give you guys a little hint here. This guy's a little ballsy. Okay, this guy's, this guy's he's little, lost everything. He's right? got so now three he testicles. Now he has nothing to lose, and that is a definition of ballsy. We're yes. only on page three right now, guys. He's a little ballsy. All right, go on. Then you better hurry up with your story. When they refused, he took them to court, where he lost his case. Two days later, the judge received an angry anonymous letter <laughs> <laughs> relating this? to that case. Who's this from? I don't know. It could be anybody. Judge, you have branded me as a man who lies. By not believing me under oath, I think you have done me a great, monstrous, and incorrectable injustice. I mean to avenge this. You are a judge. As a judge, you ought to right the wrongs of the poor. You decided for the rich people against the poor man. You decided to be the plutocrat's friend instead of that of the people who do the world's work. It's Bernie Sanders. I have been appointed to see, to see to it that you do not judge other cases. Signed, an avenger. I mean, it sounds like he had no idea how judges work. They're, they're exactly not supposed to help out the poor. It's the exact opposite. Is it really? Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, they're, cl- they're part of the system, right? They help them the man. whole. Yeah. The purpose is to make sure that the rich, rich stay people. rich. I thought that like that. That's what's actually happening. But what they're supposed to do is defend the poor. No, the Constitution says fuck the poor. Does it really? Yeah. No. I'm it's like the fourth line. It's like for our defense. It's like for the for the national defense and to make a better union and to fuck, fuck the, the poor. poor. Yeah, I'm getting my American flag tattoo lasered off. Yeah, for someone who <laughs> says he loves America so much, he should love this judge a little more. Yeah, right? be like, yeah, you're a fascist dictator, so this is perfect. Yeah, right on time. John moved into Lower Manhattan's White House Hotel in the spring of 1912. That's got to be ghetto as fuck. Yeah. It's a hotel, but with a name of something so prestigious. It's like a Martin Luther King Boulevard, the White House Hotel. Mm-hmm. It's like a seedy place. Anything but the top of the Where chance. he paid rent of $2 per week. Man. What is that today? I don't know. I didn't do the math for this you one. You usually do the math. I know. I usually do. I just, gonna, uh, please don't give us angry comments on that, guys. If you're rating the show after this episode, we will figure out how hey, much $2 Hey, here's a fun was. game for you listeners. What was $2 a week from 1912? What was $2 then now? How well, about that? How about, you do, how about you do some work? Like, listeners, I do so much work. Dude, you how about you do, do some work? Listeners. So, what? guys. No, I can, I can fight. I'll fight all of you. I'll fight all of you right now. Guys, this is good cop, bad cop of the listeners. From what I remember from Mr. Popper's Penguins in third grade <laughs> three was that uh, $5 is about $60 in today's time. So he's probably paying like $45, $50 in rent, maybe like 40 So it was still pretty cheap. I mean, yeah. It's still ghetto as, ghetto, as, ghetto as hell. Yeah, I doubt this is a good living situation. Every He spent his days wandering around the city writing poetry. Every evening Man. he would sit down alone on the hotel bar, drinking, smoking cigars, and reading newspapers. Okay, it sounds like he's doing really great, actually. Can we, do you have any of his poetry? Not every we will, we will hear some of his poetry today. So much poetry. Oh. Yes. He was well on his way to a life of drunken anonymity. Okay, so, that's, so it sounds great so far. Go on. But then he saw an article that shook him out of his lonely stupor. 
Learn how to fix bicycles from your home. Get your free 17-year-old factory girls. Oh, yeah, dude. Sign- at the oh, Tau Plaza. We're never letting that go. You got two horny people at this corner of the table. We are never letting that go. Former President Teddy Roosevelt, the most popular man in America, was not only seeking an unprecedented third term, but was also abandoning the Republican Party to start a new third party of progressives named the Bull Moose Party. <laughs> Yeah, it came from a thing where one time he said, I'm as fit as a bull moose, and then they named the party after Oh, it. that's great. The bull moose party, members 13. It's he, really how you brand yourself. That's why I didn't stick. Yeah, the no bull one moose. Wants, no one wants to vote for the Rocky and Bull Wingle party or whatever nah. the fuck. It just, yeah, it just doesn't sound right. The bull moose party. Like, is that like, a, it's like a South Park creation, isn't it? Man, bear, pig? Like, I'm yeah, from the rabbit that, ferret it's party. bull moose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here at the bull moose, we say the rabbit ferrets <laughs> don't stand for what we believe in. <laughs> But the cow cats do, yeah. and that's why we're teaming up with them and the dog worms. That, that, actually, that's uh, dog worm is actually something you don't want to get. No. Okay. When John saw the article, he became incensed, partly because of these transitions and partly because he already held a grudge against the great American leader. Oh, he already didn't like him. John's animosity towards Roosevelt started back in 1895. That was probably like well, <laughs> this is probably like gr- a grounded reason. That to not like somebody. Yeah, let's hear. What is his reason for not liking him? You're going to tell us? We have a whole, we have a laundry list. Okay. All right. Teddy had been appointed president of the New York Board of Police Commissioners and mm-hmm. was on an anti-corruption crusade. Remember, this is about 12, about 20 years earlier. Yeah. Right. At the time, two thirds of the money earned by the department came from bribes and other illegal sources, much of which came from the city's nearly 15,000 saloon keepers. New York had a law against selling booze on Sunday which happened to be a popular day for drinking, especially mm-hmm. amongst Germans. Well, what are you going to do after church? Not or drink? instead of church. Let's or be both. Fair. Yeah. Or just like it's your day off of work. Can't you just get buzzed? Not if you're German. Bar- what? No, well, Germans love, this was like, this was their thing. Yeah, they have Steins. Bar they owners Steins would typically up. lock the front door, sneak patrons in the back, and mm-hmm. pay off the police to look the other way. Kind of like I a love speakeasy. It. It's I love it. It's pre-prohibition, but it's a speakeasy. Yeah. Yeah. Teddy put a stop to that, and his actions hit the German community hard, as many earned their living either brewing or selling booze. I, th- I thought Teddy was cool. Now I'm hearing this, and I'm like, oh, he, he was not like Nixon? Well, he, he was generally, like, he was really well-loved. He was pretty cool. Didn't he get this, rid of a ton of corruption in, in Washington? When, and and like, well, that was part of what this was, was he was the anti-corruption guy. When, yeah, uh, so and, you gotta stop the bribes, and right? So, he, so he's like, I gotta stop corruption all the way across. We can change the law, but if that's the law, we gotta stop the corruption that's, that's perverted it. Okay. Yeah. I don't. It's not going to work. You only have a few years in. T- in a, okay. You, but this is before, this is like when he was in New York as a police commissioner. Yeah. yeah police commish. The commish. The well, original commish. Well, you know, <laughs> in New York, eating slices. Hey, go on. Well, undercutting the economic fortunes Roosevelt. of German good immigrants Roosevelt. should have been enough. Tanks, bro. Its contribution towards John's hatred of Roosevelt was minor compared to a dream he once had. Oh, normal. Keep going. This is totally fine. Wait, what? He's getting. This is where no. he's building it up. Like one time, that guy fucking he pinched me in a dream. I mean, I don't see how you have questions. This makes sense. Yeah, totally. You know, like how sometimes that's his rationalization for why he was upset at him. You know, like, sometimes like your he wife or girlfriend will like, get dream. angry about, about like something you did in a dream. That's why I don't tell them what I do in my dreams. Yeah, it's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, what's not to get? It makes sense. <laughs> a lot of orgies, fellas. A lot of kinky sex. In 1901, Roosevelt had been appointed vice president to Commander in Chief William McKinley. While Roosevelt was an anti-corruption, pro-working-class populist, McKinley was deep in the pockets of the corporate elite. Recent years had seen the law come down opposite the workers, ruling in favor of corporations and using private security, police, and even the army to violently punish any workers who dared to strike. Oh, it's like Standing Rock. Yeah, yeah. Sounds yeah, like I today. mean, it makes, it's par for the course for yeah. us. Yeah, it, the, the best part about this show is when you read things from 100, 200 years ago, you're like, oh, it's, it's exactly the same. The same. It's, changed it all. Yeah. it's yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. What's it's funny a- is that he's, he's wrote the judge... For being against working class poor people, and now he hates Roosevelt, who is pretty much the same thing. Yeah. yeah. One of those workers blamed McKinley for the plight of American labor. Smart. And took it on himself to shoot the president during a public speech at the Pan American Exposition. Leon Sholgosh, I know about him. He God. liked milk a lot. Son, you know so much actual history. I don't know anything. I'm just like, wait, what? This, this is all news to me. Yeah, right. Hungarian actually, anarchist. Oh, you actually did get the name right. Leon Shulgosh. Yeah, yeah. CSO something something. Like that. I was sitting there going like, is, I was sitting there going like, that actually sounds pretty close to what I read, and then it is what I read. Yeah, that's so, exactly who it is. He's staff a rushed anarchist. McKinley to the building's infirmary, which had no electricity and few supplies. How did he do down good there? Place to take a place. Place. Good, good, <laughs> good place to get a bullet removed. Let's do an impromptu surgery then. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to need from you uh, a type of doctor, <laughs> a type of surgical instrument, and hope. 
<laughs> Anyone got a candle? We don't have any lights down uh, here. Yeah. Uh, I'm an electrician, and I've got a couple straws. Is that enough? A dirty yes, towel? Yes, and operate. All right, I'm cutting him open. I think right, I'll pray. This is his leg, right? Oh, is that the right part? They didn't even have a regular doctor, so they grabbed a gynecologist from a barber shop down the street <laughs> to hey! look at the wound. <laughs> gynecologist is like, I'll just, he just has gynecology stuff for his wound. He's like, I'm just going to look at his clitoris here. They're like, That's a wound in his belly. Don't do that. Put his legs in the stirrups. I can't operate. I can't tell which one's his ovary. That's his, that's his, that's his stomach. He just opens up the wound with a speculum. Yeah. And he's just looking he goes, at well, it. Well, looks, yeah. it looks healthy enough. Yeah. And he, he keeps looking up at all the other guys around. He's like, so you're saying she's suffering from female hysteria. They're like, that's a man who's been shot. <laughs> I'm going to masturbate her until yeah. she relaxes. Wow, it's crazy that our president has a vagina. Yeah. What a, that is a stomach wound from a bullet. I mean, it could be a vagina if you want. I found this metal thing inside his vagina. That's a bullet in a wound. He dug deep in the hole with unsterilized fingers. He dug deep in the hole with unsterilized fingers. I mean, what a gynecologist. Just finger first and all hope. If that goes on your business card, gynecologist. I'll dig deep in the hole. And unsterilized fingers. That's what they call me. That's my middle name. Unsterilized gynecologist. Uh, but he could not find the bullet, so he just sewed the wound up. Right. What, what, with the wound in there? With the with bullet, the bullet in, there, in yeah. there? Can you do that? Or is that yeah. you get infected or something? Yeah, or well, well, sometimes. It doesn't turn out well for McKinley, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, the bullet might get you infected, but also, like, jamming dirty fingers into an open wound. My name is what? McKinley. He's just been in some pussies beforehand. That's a good point. I got shreds no in me. Though, we know pussies are sterile. So. Things ain't good if your name's McKinley. He's like, um, for some reason my stomach has gonorrhea. Doctor stitched me up. I still got shreds no in me. McKinley held on for a few days before dying from infection. Oh, man. No raps for that. Uh, <laughs> I hold on for a few days. There's only a couple ways, but you screwed it up. Now I'm rising up to heaven with God. That night, John he went to dreamt heaven. He's a good guy. that he was standing over McKinley's coffin when the body stirred. The dead president sat up straight and pointed his finger at a man standing in the shadows wearing a heavy robe. The president spoke, This is my murderer and nobody else. Avenge my death. The man in the robe was Teddy Roosevelt. Man, to be so crazy, but like to not be crazy enough to have like God tell you that. It's just William McKinley. Yeah. It's the same right. level yeah. of insanity. It's the same level. As no, a, 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 it's not as cool because at least God, if God tells you to kill Roosevelt, it's like, oh, it's God. But William McKinley. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. all the same level of psyche to go like, I heard this in my head. So it's real on the outside world. Avenge too. my death. Couldn't I just like name a school after you or something? That seems like way yeah. more par for the course. How about I help an investigation startup and then we can really find out who killed you? No, that's the guy from the dream. Thanks but so much. As the summary told us, they knew precisely who killed him because they yeah. caught him immediately. Immediately. Yeah, this this butcher told me to kill the president. Like this, <laughs> like the guy the guy who shot him shot him like in front of everybody. In front and of everybody, him exactly when it happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but John I, saw something else in his dream, and that's what he chooses to believe. Back in 1912, it didn't matter to John that the real killer had been captured on the spot and executed weeks later. Of course not. He had all the evidence he needed to see Roosevelt for the threat he truly was. Nice. I think I know where the story is going. I'm not excited. only had he bankrupted so many of John's German friends. Not only had he been identified as McKinley's murderer in a dream, but now he saw that what no one else could. Teddy Roosevelt was engineering a new monarchy. Oh, fuck. We've got to stop him. Mm -hmm. We can't let this happen. The only thing left is if he believed Teddy Roosevelt was a lizard person. Then he's hit yeah, all of He's a of shapeshifter? Them. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's shapeshifter He's a Zionist! Lizard. Yeah. <laughs> he's a Zionist! He's a shapeshifter! <laughs> John sat in his hotel room and wrote a sprawling manifesto detailing how Roosevelt had done everything from defaming honest politicians to tearing apart the soul of the Constitution. He believed that Roosevelt would stop at nothing to become king, even resulting to a civil war if he lost the election. And if that failed, America would be so weak that European countries were sure to invade and take over. Man, he thought highly of Roosevelt. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, really. He was a big fan. This just goes to show too how people like create their own narrative based on fact, and then like just like put whatever they want. And if they're passionate enough, you're like, "Whoa, that's a really good point. Maybe this person's right." You know, I just hope if I ever get to the point where I'm writing a manifesto, I have just enough wherewithal to step outside myself and be like, "This is probably crazy." Oh yeah, yeah. No sane person writes a manifesto. No. Well, you know what it is. What what what, here's name, what, here's right? what will happen. A is halfway through, you'll call one of us and you'll be like. Hey, can I just run this manifesto by you yeah. real quick? Yeah, is this manifesto chill? <laughs> That's a think? really funny concept. <laughs> Do you think this manifesto is going to kill? Can I think I it's going to kill. this manifesto by you? Like two hours later, like, I got to go, and I don't think that's how the world works, but good luck, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, try it on stage. Yeah, that's try what, it that's on what, stage. Try yeah. it. Just try it out, man. You drop into an open mic.
like, look, I have, uh, I'm doing an assassination next week. Can yeah. I just run my manifesto yeah. real quick? Yeah. Oh <laughs> All the lizard people need to die. That's right. Well, how does that play? And they no? list, list off their lizard people. Mm-hmm. What if you killed with your manifesto and you're like, oh, this is my career now. I just do manifestos. Right. And that's the insanity of entertainment. But a part of, a part of me is like, well, I just did this manifesto at an open mic, so I know how comics are. I might not work. <laughs> But when you do it in front of regular people, this manifesto yeah. kills. Yeah. Crushes. It kills. I'll, I'll take this manifesto to the OR on Monday, see that's, how it plays. That's right. It's Quote, in this critical time, I find that men have more interest in the baseball results than to register, think, and vote. Some things will never change. But of course, some people have no more sense than three guinea pigs. I've heard that term used so many times incorrectly, but finally, right here, that is, yeah. Land of the dismount. Mm-hmm. Yeah, v- v- guinea pigs are very unsensical creatures, so I get where he's coming oh, from. Yeah. The Even ghost of McKinley. Three or four of them. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah, it's like multiplying zero by zero. Like mm. Had given John Flamang Shrank a sacred duty to yep. save the United States of America. So he's got his. What do, you, what do they call that when you? I know you said sacred duty, but there's another like self-important thing that people do where you're like, I've got to stop them, and you're like, I don't think a you're right. Destiny, a Is calling. It- no, there's like another word for it. Like, there's like a delusions of grandeur kind of thing. It's like a combo of that. Oh, and you mean like just, what's happening right I think now? You just said it. Delusions yeah. of grandeur. That's pretty <laughs> oh, much exactly okay. what he's got. But I want another term. <laughs> Despite his immense popularity across the country, Roosevelt's chances were not looking good for the 1912 presidential race. Leaving the Republican Party had split the votes from party faithful, opening the door for the Democratic candidate Woodrow Wilson. Ooh, not Wood- an important guy. Woodrow or Woodrow not? <laughs> Given recent history, Roosevelt was half expecting an assassination attempt. Oh, nice, nice. To be that badass, to be like, someone's gonna probably going to kill me. Oh, that'd be, I'd be so Three stressed Three presidents had been gunned down during his lifetime. Really? Jesus. Really? Where's that? No yeah. president's been gunned down in my lifetime. Yeah, Do Lincoln, you, you McKinley. That's what happened. That's terrifying. No, but I mean... I mean, it, was, right, it was Lincoln, right now, McKinley, happy. and then <laughs> someone kind of between funny. Lincoln and McKinley. I don't remember who it was. I wouldn't even go that far. I would just, I just want some excitement in my political life. Are you kidding me? Yeah. We went, three, a- we went three years in one man's lifetime. Where three where presidents got assassinated, and I can't even get a shooting? That's yeah. not fair. Or just a punch. Right. Like, can when, someone when just punch? I got a shoe throw. I got a shoe throw. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's all crazy you got. Shoe push. I got a shoe throw, and then great. he also choked on a pretzel. Dude, the memes from the shoe throw were hilarious. I mean, man, that, uh, that was dope. Oh, you, dude. The, just the, let that the, happen. The gifts that people made with different things flying through the air at him. Oh, I'm surprised beautiful. that dude didn't get shot. Yeah, but let's be fair. Like, you didn't get an assassination, but you did get a whole 9-11. I mean that's a big one. That's true, but like I hope still. that I hope that we still have listeners after that comment. <laughs> I'm just I'm just telling what I'm just talking about Assange's hopes and dreams, not oh, my own. Oh, I know. I think that was offensive, but I mean for Assange, maybe maybe if the president was in one of the planes, maybe. Mm, there you go. I know it never gets like a real, you know, like a, one of those real, like uh, you know, what's that? What's no. the movie with Harrison Ford? Right. Like, never that's have, that's like, also the closest thing I've had. I've had Air Force One. You know that no celebrities died in 9/11. None. None. Are you sure? <laughs> Only 2,000 people died. 3,000. 3,000. You're right. I'm... But still, but you think, okay, you, you think like if John Travolta had died in 9 11, we would just mostly been talked about how John, like, it'd be like 9 11 happened, but more importantly, John Travolta yeah, was that dead. Would be That would be the day Travolta died. Honestly, yeah, would it that's make a difference, though, if that, if, since 2001? What's, no, we what's would, Travolta done? He did swordfish or something like that? It's, we would be like, fine. Yeah, but if he had died in that, we would literally be calling that the day Travolta died. But this was that like, would be 100% what we would call that. <laughs> This was Travolta Battlefield died. Earth Travolta. I mean, this was him at the top of his powers. Said, Travolta's dead. Uh, after a failed attempt on his life, uh, Teddy had uh, taken to carrying his own protection, a loaded revolver tucked in his pants pocket. Oh, fuck, yeah. That's Do you know my, about that's my kind of prison? What was a failed attempt? Do you know? Um, someone had come to his summer home and tried to, like, rush the building. And he'd been on his front steps, and the security had, like, tackled the guy when he was, like, 15 feet away. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, man, I like that guy's gumption though to yeah. be like they well, just arrested this, someone by the white house the other day that had knives and shit like that really it was like trying to get to the white house yeah oh that's you know this what? happens all the time go for it yeah. you just don't hear about it as much because of like modern like uh news and stuff like that there's so much stuff going on they can bury whatever it is speed just, so not... hey if you if you get to the president purely through bum rush you deserve that kill <laughs> fair if I want this if guy to be the judge. Straight straight should be a judge. If it's a straight bum rush, it's like, hey, man, you clearly wanted it more than anybody else. Just give us on a gavel. I mean, just let him start judging some things. He's oh, got I a would. good head on his shoulders. I would definitely be. Uh, it, that, that's, a, that's fair. Yeah. Hashtag intelligence community. As Teddy worked the campaign trail, John Shrank worked himself into a frenzy. It was past midnight on September 14th, 1912, the 11th anniversary of McKinley's death. There's so much lunch to man. I don't know what he's (laughs) angry about. John couldn't sleep, so he decided to write a poem titled, Be a Man. And you're about to read that poem right now. Just the first two stanzas. Let's hear it. Oh, man, please have something about be as quick as a coursing river. If it's just the Mulan song, I would love it. 
Be a man from early to late. When you rise in the morning till you go to bed, be a man. Is your country in danger and you are called to defend? Where the battle is hottest and death be the end. Face it and be a man. You know, for how many poems he writes, you think it would be a little bit better. That's yeah. a pretty simple rhyming, rhyming scheme. Also, that poem doesn't sound like, uh, right now, it doesn't sound like the words of an insane person. It sounds like you could just, you could show it to like some 18 uh, year olds that are just about to become soldiers and they'd be like, I'm going to fight for this country. Yeah, it's very, I guess, whatever the 1900s version of emo was. Well, the next <laughs> verse is like, if you lose your job and it's not really going too well, like, <laughs> kill the president. <laughs> like, oh, this is where it gets a little weird. Yeah. I can't believe you left that line out. <laughs> Be a man. Uh, okay. Don't send a boat through Hell's Gate. It's just yeah. his whole life. As he penned this crapster piece. <laughs> oh, crapster piece. That's, you were proud of that you one. You invented that. You yeah. wrote that one. That and you were, you like, were a man when you invo- invented that word. John crapster heard piece. a voice behind him. Let no murderer occupy the presidential chair for a third term. Avenge my death. Oh my, my god. My god, William this McKinley fucking dork. is yep. just all over the place. He oh, felt man. a hand turn on his shoulder, turn and saw the face of William McKinley. Man. There was no question in it now. John was, as he saw it, a modern day Moses or Joan of Arc. This guy had a brain tumor. M- modern day Moses or Joan of Arc. One of the two. Just pick yeah. one, dude. Joan, just one of the two. Mosey Joan. That'd be a cool name. Hey, what's two up? Two people who also, during their lifetime, very unsuccessful in getting their goals done. But later, I we think Moses their books. did pretty good. He didn't take him to the promised land, did he? God had come to John Shrank and. Jo- God had come. And at, at and a stop. time of great peril and given him a task. John put down his shitty poem and wrote an open letter to the American people. Nice. Explaining his visions and goals. Quote, I am willing to die for my country, he wrote. God has called me to be his instrument. What an idiot. That's the dumbest shit. I'm willing to die for my country. Well, great. That always proves nice. I'm willing to die for this country I wasn't born in. Yeah. Well, it's just the funniest thing. We're like, oh, that's a real good violent conflict resolution. You're ready to just die for this? That's great. That's great. John owned a Colt 38. Oh, yeah. But he had only ever shot it in the air to celebrate the 4th of July. Right. Oh, my God. This is a patriot, and he's insane. Perfect, perfect time to kill the president. It's like I love him, and I hate him. Do bullets never fall back down and hit people when they- They always do. Well, they don't always hit people, but they fall back down at the same velocity that they go back up. Yeah. You, You can learn about that when you're a kid, and they say don't shoot guns in the air. So basically, the best plan to take to get take out ISIS me. is to give them reasons to celebrate, and they'll just shoot a bunch of bullets in the air, and then they all die like a week later, or however long it takes bullets to come back. Okay, I like true. your problem solving technique. That's cool. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good problem. My yeah. pl- my plan for ISIS, if you guys want to know, is just yes. do nothing. Just leave them alone, and then eventually they're gonna be like, oh shit! If they don't do anything, we have nothing to we have nothing to be against. I guess that would. Well, here know. here's my plan. Oh, we're gonna get political They don't here. have boats. That's, that's, that's ISIS my, doesn't have boats? That's my whole plan. Because we don't let them have boats. If we let them have boats, oh, it's going to be nasty. That's a good point. Of the caliphate all over again, or whatever they called it. Uh, we will now the, the gun, earth! Now the gun sat in his storage locker, and he had convinced himself it was too dangerous to retrieve. So on oh, September, so this is the part that's too dangerous. Yeah, that, okay. right? The getting his gun from his I storage locker. I told you, locker. this guy's got a good head on his shoulders. He's figuring it out slowly. He's a smart yeah. fellow. Getting the gun is too crazy, but McKinley's got my back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> McKinley's got my back. Another great t-shirt slogan. On We've September 21st, today. he went to a gun store to buy a 38 caliber Smith & Wesson for the price of $14. Oh, man, great the deal. The salesman Big asked five. to see his permit, but of course, John did not have one. They needed a Whatever, permit in those days? it's America. Have they, it. They needed a permit in those days? A law had been passed two years before after a, <laughs> after like a rash of murders and suicides yeah. that required permits to be able to carry a concealed gun in New York. Oh, well, that might uh, have been but, a good decision. But <laughs> while the, the penalty for carrying the gun was a felony... The penalty for selling an, un- an illegal gun was only a misdemeanor, mm. so all the gun shops just kept on selling guns anyway. Well, you know, oh, give a at least at the very least, thank God America's gun laws make sense now. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, at least folks, everything is all cleared up. There's no controversy. I folks, think we can just move on. Dry delivery. This man is being sarcastic. We. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty good here. Yeah, I told him cool people owning guns, but there's a certain part of me that's like maybe. We shouldn't just let everybody look. Just have no, we have, we have, we have, the, we have the best gun laws in the country and the world. Really, we have the Do greatest. We, really? we have the per, the most perfect prison system in right. world oh, history. You're being sarcastic, clearly. You yeah, our, our, our police are fair, treat yeah. everyone equally. They're not insulation for the elite. No they're, one. They're, they're no, there to actually protect and serve. No one's afraid of them. That's right. Politics. They're not wasting tax dollars that people are slaving f- to give them. When the salesman refused to sell the gun, John explained he was leaving New York that day and showed his ferry ticket. In that case, the clerk was happy to sell an unlicensed weapon. Yeah, take oh, the gun what? with you to Croatia. Yeah, sure. you're getting out of here. Yeah. Well, why didn't you say so earlier? <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, 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 you're hitting the road. Oh, take yeah. two guns. You didn't have your permit, but I didn't know you wanted the gun. Yeah. Are you going to need a permit where you're going? 
then take them. Yes, who cares? John gave him $14 for the gun, plus 50 cents for a box of bullets, and 50 more for his troubles. My God. Oh, man. Dude, can we just take a time machine he back and just a with 40 ship. bucks each and yeah. just be kings? Or just go back in the day when troubles caught, meant something? He boarded a steamship called the Comanche, making his way south. He carried a single suitcase stuffed with a change of clothes, some paperwork, the gun, and piles upon piles of his writings. Pop, that, that sounds like someone who's in a really good space mentally. This sounds like the epitome of the manifesto insane guy. Yeah, it sounds like he's going to go to wherever he's going and settle down, start up a family with a you know appropriate aged girl. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point, too, huh? Yeah. With a 17-year-old ju- Actually, in those days, it was totally legal. In some states, that's still legal. Yeah. Mostly political ramblings, John wrote on notebooks, envelopes, and utility bills. But what do you talk about? You know what I'm saying? So you're 17. I want to sell that. Yeah. <laughs> you got some coffee? You want to get some coffee? Oh, it's too strong for you? I work at a factory. <laughs> oh, nice. I don't even have a job. This is perfect. There was also a letter addressed to a dear lady where he asked her forgiveness for making love in an abrupt manner. Okay, so he oh, wrote a man. letter to his old lady or What's he raped some, someone? That's some beta shit to do right <laughs> to there. Some... <laughs> <laughs> he came too quickly and then wrote a letter to apologize. Oh, that's what happened. That's I don't exactly know. what happened. I'm not sure what abrupt manner means, but I'm going to go with the But that's exactly what happened. He, uh, you know. They didn't have condoms, though. Well, what happened days. is he was fucking her, and then William McKinley came to him in the dream, and he couldn't stop. Yeah. You he, know? Just, he just came too quick. He he's just like, came. Oh. He like, William McKinley was put his hand on his shoulder. He's like, come, 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 come. And he goes like, yes, yeah, sir, and I'm proud to be an American. Ah. And she's like, um, we didn't even change positions. But I had divine inspiration to ejaculate immediately. Well, I didn't, and I, I still like to keep going. I like to think that his dirty talk is just talking about Roosevelt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what would he say? She'd be like, oh, oh, fuck me. And he'd be like, Ugh. oh, man, just like Roosevelt said, I'm carrying a big stick. And she's just like, it's, what? He's like, nothing. <clears throat> He's going to die. <laughs> He's going to die. Harder. <laughs> you know, honey, I, I like to think of... Uh, of uh, of McKinley when I have sex and if you need to get on the same page try something similar like Mary Todd Lincoln you know whatever you're into whatever uh, gets you started um, are you gonna come yet like she just ignores exactly what he says are you gonna come yet I gotta go uh, I apologize for the abrupt manner of this love the saddest thing any man can hear when he's fucking are you gonna come yet yeah <laughs> just not just a second he tried. I gotta to f- kill some presidents. Jeez. Because it's like, because oh, it's like when you write like a text message that's like low confidence like that, it makes sense that you send it because it's in the moment. But at, when you're writing a letter, you have like at a so certain point, time. like when you buy the postage, you gotta be thinking this is a bad idea. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there's so many steps, like there's so many gates that you should have stopped at. Right. There's so many. You like, just kept going. You have your friends what? read your apology for coming letter. But did yeah. John I think but, the smiley face is too is like the right tone? Did John have any friends though? Like or no. he, he's so he's alone, so he didn't have anybody. <laughs> Nobody. You would tell me, you'd be Our like, Shesky, please don't. Oh, yeah. Well, a yeah. lot of things about us touch. But, That's true. Uh, you would tell me. You'd be like, don't do that. And I'd yeah. be like, thanks for like for like watching my back there mm-hmm. and like helping me out. But he didn't have a homie to he like tell him, like, don't write that letter, dude. He's it's just, just like a text. He just say. had McKinley. That's it. Yeah. Uh, and McKinley's God. sitting there going like, so bro, he's got a D. This is just- bro, seriously, you came too fast. You need to apologize. <laughs> also kill Roosevelt. Real quick. By the way, can you like get some nachos, leave them on my grave? Just Maybe you should write her a poem. And I won't forget to leave nachos on your grave. The stones, the Rolling Stones. Mm. Dead flowers. Don't know it. Send he tried me to... some nachos <laughs> every morning. Send me some nachos by the mail. Send he tried... me some nachos to my wedding, and I won't forget to put nachos on your grave. Bow, bow, bow. He tried no, to pull I the won't the forget to put nachos on your grave. That was the Towns Van Zandt version. All right, go on. He tried what are you to follow... nachos? Huh? What'd you say? You said nachos? Yeah, nachos. Oh, cool. Yeah, now you can go on. He <laughs> tried to follow the candidate all over the South. Who who tried to do what all over John the South? John tried to follow Teddy Roosevelt all over the South. Okay. But he kept missing the campaign by hours. The one time he made it to an event, it was already sold out. That's at no point was like, maybe I should wake up earlier. Maybe. This, I know for how focused and weird this guy is, you'd think he'd be like, he would have w- slept outside like the people do for Last Comic Standing. Yeah. Instead, he's just like, eh, I got about an hour to be there, so I'll probably leave in about, yeah, about 15 well, also, minutes. Also, part what of it. You- there's no traffic. Roosevelt's right? campaign kept on changing like campaign stops. So he'd be like, oh, they're in Chattanooga tomorrow. He'd go there. And then they're like, 
So they're, they're inside there in This is Atlanta. when things were a day's ride, horse ride away, right? So like you can't just like, it's not just like No, minutes. this is 1912, so there's trains and shit like that. Okay, a day's train ride away. Sure. Don't fucking fuck me on this, dude. I'm right. Asshat. Uh, asshat, sorry. Uh, this might have been lucky for John, the sold out event, because another man tried to rush Teddy at the event and was caught and repeatedly punched in the face. That's... Again, good, good, good attempt. Good right. attempt. Uh, if it's a straight bum rush, I'm, I'm fine with it. No guns, just knives, and n- just knives in a dream. <laughs> knives, knives in a dream. I wish more people would challenge them to like roast battles or like physical, like like let's box. You know what I mean? Like instead of trying to kill someone, I'm Teddy sure just challenged another. That he was challenged. Human... I'm sure that Teddy Roosevelt was challenged to at least five thousand boxing matches. Oh, okay. Well, then I time. commend those guys. Yeah. But also, the Teddy Roosevelt was a, shooter, was a crazy ass dude. He would just like go he... into battles like horse first. And yeah, like that's you know he, yeah. he had he had chutzpah. Yeah, out of all the out of all like the presidents to bum rush, he would be the one I'd want to least do it to. Yeah, he like, probably beat the shit out of a lot of people. Yeah, run after Taft. He's not going anywhere. What do you think are like the three toughest like physical fight all time presidents? Oh, uh, oh, it has to be Roosevelt is one of them. Right. Andrew Jackson. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Andrew Jackson is legit on that list. Yeah, Sorry, Miss Jackson. There's, there's a great story about Andrew Jackson. How about someone tried to uh, assassinate him, shot a bullet at him point blank, missed, and then Andrew Jackson just beat him with his cane. He that didn't even kill him. He just beat him he with a cane. He just beat him. He just oh, because wow. even apparently even bullets were like we're not fucking with Andrew Jackson. You gotta <laughs> you gotta you gotta find some other way to kill him. Andrew Jackson survive? Did he live a long life? Or did oh he yeah, just... I mean he lived long enough to destroy the Native Americans. Oh Jesus! And was... then uh, so that's why he's bad. He tried to get, we were yeah. all excited. Yeah, that's cool. Then you're like, oh, he was a genocide. Yeah, that's why he's on our twenty. Jesus. Uh, and then Carter's like, I got hands. And like, actually... no, you don't, Carter. No, yeah. no you don't. Uh, who else would be bad? They didn't even have eight years. Get the fuck out of here. I bet Bush would be good in a fight. Bush one or Bush two? Bush two. Bush two. You think he's so? Dead? Yeah, I think so. I, he seemed he seemed like a nice guy that just does exactly. whatever he's got to do. So I feel like in a fight he wouldn't. He'd be like, I feel like on, Bush on, one would beat Bush two in a fight. I don't know. His dad? Man. Yeah, I think. Yeah, his dad think, seems. His dad seems prime? like a cold murderer, and regular well, Bush just prime. seemed like a decent maybe. Dude, but he was just you know he made some. You know bad who decisions. I'd say probably beats both those guys though. And I hate to say it, but I bet you Reagan probably kicks both their asses. That's true. Yeah, he was in movie star shape. You know what I'm saying? He was, but he was old by the time he was. He was I'm talking was about like in a, his prime. Oh, okay. Presidents in their prime. Presidents in their prime. Yeah, you, you, you're not gonna go like, hey, uh, how was how was Barack Obama fair oh, up Obama against Richard Nixon shape. or whatever? Those pictures of him uh, running on the beach, I always think back that like, fuck, he's in such good shape for how busy he was. He must have done push-ups every night in the Oval Office. You know what I mean? Yeah, or all that stress. All that stress will keep you in good shape. No, That's it true. won't. You eat carbs when you get stressed out, right, fellers? <laughs> Just me? Just yeah, I think just you. I don't exercise. I, I think uh, Ulysses S. Grant would probably be badass too. Oh, he won a civil call. war. Yeah. He also I'm pretty sure he's the only president to get a speeding ticket. To a speeding ticket? While being president. That's hilarious. I'm pretty sure. Are I you serious? I wouldn't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. What and that would be driving? odd because he was a president so long ago when cars, you know, like just... Oh, I'm like with a horse and carriage type shit. Yeah. Like he was going way too fast. I you know the more I say the more Could you really get, how did they gauge it? They're like Yeah. <laughs> You know, honestly, I just like uh, how did you get how did you get to me, officer? Well, I heard like the rate of the clop clops yeah. was obviously fast enough. Yeah, you were too too many clops. Too many clops. We clopped you in at too too many. So clopped. John followed the bull moose campaign to Tennessee. This time he got within ten feet of the candidate during a parade. Oh shit! But lost his nerve and kept the gun in his pocket. Ah, uh, see, just a pussy again. Yep. <sighs> Which isn't a bad thing. Pussy is a negative connotation a little bit on the show, but uh, it's totally respectable. Ladies, we love your organs. For the next few weeks, he followed the campaign from stop to stop, waiting for the moment to strike. Every day he got more antsy, beating himself up over his cowardice. Again, he could not find an opening. How did he beat himself up? Did he smack himself in the face in the mirror? Yeah. yeah. Well, mostly, mostly he cried while uh, banging himself in the asshole. <laughs> like with a... a like how, 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 I vis- how I visually... He did carved, that. He yeah, car- he for carved all the, a wooden for all the people Teddy on the podcast. Roosevelt. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're, for, let me describe it for you. Slayton just uh, pretend like he was stuffing a uh, Teddy Roosevelt wooden carved dildo into his butt. Over yes, and over again, specifically as, that. As he cried. So John followed the campaign to Milwaukee. He had been on the road now for weeks and looked like a freshly made vagrant. He was growing more desperate the, as election day was only three weeks away. So he's oh, just man. ready to assassinate this guy, but he doesn't have the nerve yet. Yeah, he for hasn't weeks, been able to work it he's out. He's like trying to make it work. It's, you know what? It is? This is like exactly like the first time I hit an open mic when I started comedy. I'm just like I would get like, there and I'd be like, "Not today, not today." But no he's way. doing that with an assassination. Yeah, I feel like an assassination is just like a band aid. You just gotta do it and rip it off. Yeah, pull and it then, off fast, man. You gotta then, pull it off and then go from there. Yeah, just you know what? Don't worry about like honestly, it's not gonna make you or break you. Just go ahead and take a shot. <laughs> right. Just take and, it. Yeah. Everybody bombs. <laughs> On the evening of October fourteenth, nineteen twelve. 
John Shrank nervously drank at Rolfink's saloon. John Shrank nervously drank. John now, Shrank nervously drank. At this point, you would think he would have some control on his nerves. No. Well, no, he's turned, figured out what it is. It's booze. Ah. Uh, that, that booze is his magic, like, bullet that gets mm-hmm. him, like, fucking in the mood in yeah. the zone. Man, he's the only person. Yeah, join right? the club, No right? one else. Yeah, booze doesn't work for anyone else. He made some small talk with the bartender, then asked the band to play the Star Spangled Banner. How's the weather? Pretty good. Oh Gonna kill God. the president today? This dude is insane. Hey, will you guys play a song that has, like, no beat or no rhythm? He, while he played, while they played, he got up and danced a short jig. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, this is what, the 1900s? The Star Spangled Banners might have still been a fire song at that point. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. might have been. Yeah, this is, uh, this is big. Yeah. Francis Scott Key got bars. Yeah, right? <laughs> then he brought, he bought an, a round for the entire bar, finished his drink, and left. Roosevelt's motorcade pulled up to the Gilpatrick Hotel a little after 8 p.m. Final. The entrance was surrounded by the usual throng of people. Throng. Roosevelt throng, stood up in his car throng. and waved to the crowd. A Hello. Pis- a pistol rose up from the from the audience. Oh she. Bang. That would have been funny if it wasn't John. If John got there, like, God damn it! Yeah, like he I'm, just got thwarted. Yeah, I should have done this in Milwaukee. What was happening? <laughs> another what? another guy named John too. Yeah. Like, what? And he looks just like me. Fuck! Yeah, it, well, he's stuck with Johan because he's not a, you know, ashamed of where he came from. Oh, he's still Johan. Yeah. yeah he's I still... changed my name for this shit, yeah. man. <laughs> Pandemonium broke loose as Roosevelt sank to his knees. His secretary, Albert Martin, tackled John, ripped away his gun, and started to choke him. We're just going to gloss by Albert like it's a normal name. But yeah. go on. Oh, they're all not normal Fred names. Fred Lodich, a security <laughs> guard, Lodich. jumped at Shrink. A confused policeman began to beat Fred with his nightstick. That's so funny if the confused policeman was just beating the random black dude. people around there. The wrong like, dude? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, my training just tells me just beat something. Yeah. Cecil Lyon, a political advisor. And a lion. Cecil the Lion. Cecil the Lion. Killed Cecil by a dentist. The, Cecil the Lion, a political <laughs> advisor, pulled his own gun and pointed it at the advancing police officers. Nice. Nice. An immigrant named Frank so Bukowski. So hell's breaking loose here. No one knows what's going insanity. on. People Why is like, there a lion with a gun? Yeah. People are shouting. <laughs> yeah. Just shooting at things, hitting things. Like an immigrant well, Who named are you shooting for? I don't know. Who are you shooting for? I don't know. Just shoot. Hit. Don't shoot me, though. An immigrant named Frank Buskowski That's what this story jumped needed. on the assassin yelling, kill him, kill him. A policeman thought he meant Roosevelt, so he clubbed Frank over the head and dragged him away. Okay. The guy who was trying to help, Frank Buskowski. Yeah. 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 The policeman just saw immigrant and hit him. That's yep. what happened. I yeah. mean, literally, <laughs> if you go deeper into that story, like the policeman was like, what do you What do you mean? That's that's not that's not right. And the guy tried to explain himself, but his accent was so fucked up. The policeman was like, nope, and just hit him and took him away. Man, that's that happened what, a lot. That's how you, that's a good way to deal with immigrants. Just beat them over the head. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I got lost in translation. Sorry about beating you, but that's yeah. I protocol. thought you wanted this. Yeah, I thought you were asking me to hit you. It was an S&M thing. Back in the car, people attended the Teddy. As the crowd yelled, kill him, kill him. Um, Teddy was like, me? They want to kill me? But I'm the president. No, sir. We're t- they're talking about the guy who tried to kill you. Oh, that's cool. But before the crowd could turn into a mob, Roosevelt miraculously pulled himself to his feet and ordered everyone to stop. Chill out, you fucking pansies. Yeah. Bring him it's to tr- me. It's the bullets in me, not you. Yeah. yeah. Bring him to me, he yelled. He took a look at Shrank and ordered that the police hold him safely. Oh, what a badass. Then he turned to the driver and ordered him to drive to the auditorium. As blood leaked from his chest, he declared that this might be his last speech and he wasn't going to miss it. Oh, yeah. That's Roosevelt. So that's what Roosevelt said? Mm-hmm. That's not the exact He quote. got shot in the chest yeah. and was like, I'm not missing my fucking this speech. Yeah, I'm I probably going to die. I was yep. so excited about this because I had heard the story of Roosevelt getting shot in the chest before and yeah. just continuing the speech. And then like halfway through, I was like, oh, this is what this story is going to be. This it's is crazy. Like crazy, man. When they reached the venue, he finally let a doctor examine him. They pulled open his shirt to find a wound in his chest. It was a gynecologist, again. (laughs) First of all, I just want to say your vagina is extremely high, man. All these presidents have (laughs) pussies on their chests. What's happening? Finally, a woman president. First of all, I'd like to just say I'm very honored to get to work on you medically. Second of all, I'm with her. (laughs) I'm with her. It's just the dumbest gynecologist (laughs) ever. This vagina is very bloody. I think you're on your cycle right now, ma'am. He's like, I've been shot in the chest. Who keeps letting this guy in our meetings? (laughs) It's the same gynecologist. It's the same gynecologist. (laughs) All right, they're like, right this way, sir, please help. He's like, all right, show me the vagina. Where is it? He worked on McKinley. Turned out good for him. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) hey, hey, doctor, would you bring that up against David (laughs) Boy? Hey, doctor, would you uh, please examine my vagina? Oh, my God, there's a bullet wound in your crotch. Oh, he gets it mixed up? He gets it mixed up. That's... I've had a really rough, rough week, about 40 appointments, a bunch of bullet wounds. Who's shooting all these women? How come no one's talking about this? <laughs> Sir, I think those are the vaginas, and the two precedents are actually bullet wounds. No, they got vagina chests. <laughs> no, I saw it in a dream. No, vagina chest. I knew you were going to lie to me. Vagina chest. Vagina chest. 
That's a good uh, atmosphere album title. He took a couple of deep breaths, but didn't cough up any blood. The right. doctor agreed. The blood was too afraid. The doctor <laughs> agreed the bullet hadn't gone through, nice. but told Teddy that he shouldn't give the speech. Roosevelt asked for a clean handkerchief, put it over the wound, buttoned up his shirt, and walked on stage. And put on sunglasses, too? <laughs> yeah. Flicked a cigarette. You know the difference between you and me? I make this look good. He walked away from an explosion <laughs> that was ravaging behind. Ravaging. Ravaging. Ooh, yeah. very nice accent you have there, Mr. Slayton. Ravaging. Saved, saved his daughter from a sex ring. And when then, the MC introduced that, Roosevelt, that a that's a taken reference. Oh, he told the crowd that there was a bullet in his chest. <laughs> That's a very, a very. If, uh, I've noticed for stand up too is just if you're very upfront with what you're feeling at the top, they'll appreciate. They really you more. like yeah. to just yeah yeah. I got a, I just got a speeding ticket or there's a bullet in my chest. Yeah, they I want just got, you to be real. I just got shot. Be in the moment, man. <laughs> Vote for me. Yeah. When some people cried out that it was <laughs> it fake, killed. it really Roosevelt killed. opened his shirt and showed them his bloody chest. Does this look fake, you little bitch? And there's just blood dripping down. That's not a bullet wound. That's a vagina. <laughs> Who let the gynecologist yeah. in? Who let the gynecologist in? <laughs> 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 Doesn't have the same ring to it. Gynecologist Convention of Milwaukee. Yeah. I've been shot. <laughs> Boo, that's your pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Get off vagina chest. Your labia majora looks a little odd. That's a skin flap from the bullet wound, but um, thank you for noticing. Roosevelt began his speech. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Friends, I shall ask you to be as quiet as possible. Because I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot. But it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. Oh, to be fair, if, 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 if you're in the audience and some guy walks on stage talking about how he just got shot, you're kind of be like, that's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. No, it's bull moose. The crowd responded. <laughs> ah! <That> was, <laughs> and Point Shevsky taking the lead. Yeah. The crowd responded oh, a with a fuck. massive ovation. Know. During the applause, Roosevelt pulled out his 50-page speech to discover a whole... 50-page <laughs> <laughs> speech! <laughs> the doctor's like, sir, I don't think it's a good idea that you do the whole speech. Yeah. Get out of my way! Think about this. This podcast, right, you have, what, seven, eight pages? There's yeah. 14 pages, but their font is, like, 14 size... Double space. Space and a half, yeah. And it's gonna... We're at minute 50 right now? Yeah. 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 Oh, man, he was going for it. Yeah. Yeah. Guy yeah. Just you have listen to, to me. You have to understand in those days you were like, please, uh, please take a long time. Otherwise, I have to go back to my shitty like shanty and life sucks. So That's you, true. You wanted things to take up a lot of time. That's a good point. Roosevelt pulled out his 50-page speech to discover a hole through the middle. Oh, all that work. He had to handwrite all that. That oh. is pimp shit. Man, I wish I died. That's what yeah. you thought. Fuck. Uh, you know, yeah. I wish this killed me. I guess I'm going to have to improv it. <laughs> yes, I am the president and I've been shot. Quick, someone give me a campaign issue That's, and a place. Gynecology, education, and here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As he realized how lucky he had been, he continued. But, unfort but fortunately, I had my manuscript. So you see, I was going to make a long speech and there is a bullet. There is where the bullet went through, and it probably saved me from saved me from it going into my heart. Yeah, that's fifty oh. pages. That's the not... bullet is in me now, so that I cannot make a very long speech, but I will try my best. Wow, I'd so be he's... having an anxiety attack. I'd be passing out. I wouldn't be like super. He's lagged. giving so few fucks right now. Yeah, right. That's so fair. badass. Yeah. Roosevelt read his speech: "Progressive cause greater than any individual," outlining his plan for the country. A few times he swooned, nearly collapsing but he refused to quit or even sit down. That's that's so crazy that he got shot in the chest and then made a speech about how the individual is not that important. Yeah. Oh, dude, the that's, balls. Oh, man. that's Talk about really bringing your speech home. Right? Talk about, like, you know, certain people must have been like, did he plan this? That's no, pretty good. No, you can't plan it that well. That has to happen to you. Everybody who writes a speech should hope that they do it while they've been shot. Yeah, but he does have a vagina on his chest, so you don't know what he's capable of. You got to go back to school, gynecology man. At one point, he asked that's how long superhero. he'd been speaking. Gynecology man! When one of his aides... Put that book down! <laughs> okay, sorry. He's just really When dumb. one of his aides replied he had been on for 45 minutes... Paid for by the citizens for dumb gynecologists. He drew more laughs when he replied... Very well, I will speak for 15 minutes more. Oh my oh, God. Jesus Christ. He what did a the old, I gotta get out of here. They just yeah. gave me the light, and everyone's like, no, stay. He's like, all right, all right. Roosevelt so, spoke for 80 minutes that night. Oh my God. When he reached his last line, the audience roared with applause. He turned to the doctor and said, Now I am ready to go with you and do what you want. What? So he's the only fuck? alive because of his. Because 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 of two things. One, he had the fifty page speech that was in his pocket. Actually, like protected him. Actually protected, slowed the bullet like down. Slowed, yeah, because it twisted and his in there, glasses like case. He had a metal glasses case in there in there as well. So that the bullet hole went bullet went through the glasses case, uh, through the thing, and then kind of just like kicked it in his chest. I was like, "What's up? I'm just hang out right here." And and really, he's like, I'm a, this is a good. 
talk for 80 minutes type deal. Store stuff in your chest, dude. Your yeah. breast pocket. Get a Just keep stuff on your chest. That's a, if you get to take anything from this. Meanwhile, police interrogated John Shrank, who remained unrepentant. Yeah, I mean, I, what are the police going to do when they know McKinley's behind this? What are you right. going to, you know? Yeah. You're in a weird yeah. ethical quandary. <laughs> Try to put handcuffs on a ghost officer. Yeah, especially, <laughs> See what when happens. especially a president ghost. I was just following orders. Yeah, by the way, yeah, he's going to get away with it. He's the fucking president. Uh, Captain, I have a really bad news for you. To get the culprit, we need a shovel and a Ouija board. What are you talking about, Johnson? Well, this guy, the guy, he, I, we saw him pull the trigger. It wasn't him. It Where's was, the evidence? It was McKinley's ghost. Yeah, it was a, it, well, see, we found like 5,000 pages of story that says that it was a ghost of a president. Told me to kill Roosevelt. Oh. Yeah, see, this is, I mean, this is a reliable witness, obviously. Yeah, I'm the guy. All right, you're fired. What the hell are you talking about? Just get the ghost. We'll wait till I fall asleep and he'll come back. Ghosts don't commit crimes, kid. Let me have sex with a woman. He'll tell me to come early. We don't have any German factory workers. I can tell it's your type, you freak. You know, oh. uh, Mr. Schrank, you could have sex with a woman, but also, I've just been shot. So if you're looking for a vagina, I have one right here. Oh, man, Mr. Roosevelt, you need crazy. to get back on stage and finish your speech. Uh, I only have 78 more pages to go. Jesus. It's a long speech. Go on with your story. Can I write mean, a poem about this? <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, he's actually uh, writing one. They're like, hey, guy, they, the, 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 they're trying to interrogate. He's like, <laughs> I'm in the middle of a line from my poem. Yeah. It's crazy that you will be this close to Roosevelt again. It's a really good stanza. Meanwhile, police interrogated John Shrank, who remained unrepentant. When he learned they were taking him to court, he noted he had lost his hat in the scuffle. The police grabbed him an old hat they found in the station. Yeah, that's a big deal. That's Hats in that time were a huge deal. Huge. One thing we've seen throughout the show is that whenever someone is like, well, I, I don't have my nice things for court, they go, oh, well, we can't have you appearing in court not. Without a hat. Yeah. There's like this essential gentlemanliness that's even like if you're the worst criminal ever, they're like, well, he needs a good button up. Fast shit. forward to this decade, and a woman was brought to court with no pants on from what, jail. What, right, what, but what court is that? Yeah. <laughs> at, least, at least it wasn't a dude with a hat. Makes you want to do point. jury duty. Yeah. Well, no pants on the I lady. Get, I guarantee you, the more you read stories from about this time, the more you're going to be like, what the f- Why are there so many hats? Yeah. That's like a legit thing that's going to happen. There's not a lot to be happy about those days, so you're like, you know what? I got this hat. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else got typhoid and consumption, but I have a nice hat. John Shrank went in for his arraignment and immediately pled guilty. His oh, trial man. was set for next month. Talk about it. Both of these guys don't give a fuck. I think that's what I like about this story. He probably pl proudly pled guilty. He's like, guilty? If that's what you want to call it. Yeah, I'm guilty the guy that... of loving my country. Yeah, that's right. Right, Ghost McKinley? You guys are basically both quoting to him. to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. You guys are pretty much, in the in the book where we source a lot of this stuff, you guys are basically just like quoting exactly what he said. Okay, so man, regions. that's good to know that we're in the same headspace as this guy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Those, well, yeah, we, we got it. At a hospital in Chicago, surgeons decided to not remove the bullet as it was as it didn't appear to pose much of a risk as surgery. No, your vagina looks fine, ma'am. Uh, you you seem to have badass this bullet wound. Why don't you just keep it in? <laughs> badass it. Yeah. Roosevelt joked with the press and flirted <laughs> with the nurses. <laughs> flirted with the nurses. Like, yeah. You know, you know, it makes a man heal. Well, at one point they were transferred from one hospital. They were like, he wanted to move to a different hospital for better care. Yeah. And the doctors were like, we don't think you should move. And the nurse was like, yeah, we don't think you should move. And he looked at these four like hot nurses. He was like, well, if Mrs. Roosevelt were here, she would insist that I move. That's like a good. Oh, real, that's yeah. a good line, right? Also, if you get shot in the chest and then immediately deliver an eighty-minute speech, you're probably gonna get laid. Yeah. Probably. And those are like those by, are like very getting laid circumstances. Yeah. By whoever's there that night. Because by, you have you, to just get laid. You gotta, even, you gotta at least you gotta At the very end of the day, some guy's gonna be like, Look, I don't know how you missed all this pussy, but I'll fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's gotta fuck you. So somehow this guy's dick is not staying dry for twenty four hours after that shit. I was very <laughs> pleased to learn that the treatment for a gunshot to the chest is infinite blowjobs. Oh man. I, would you risk it? I mean infinite blowjobs? Infinite blowjobs? Ladies, if so if you Oof. got an infinite cunnilingus by getting shot in the chest, would you do it? You know? I'm saying? I think their priorities are, are a little no, different. No. Like, I can already have infinite kind of like this, so right now yeah. I just like to, you know, I don't know what a girl's uh, like. What <laughs> girl's like? Every what news story was about like? the shooting. Even the nurses became celebrities. One of them received 11 marriage proposals. Another had nine. We're exactly the same. We're exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like that's, Instagram. They were ugly. That's, yeah. that's, that's the version of Instagram. Yeah. yeah. People. Just dudes hitting them up, being all creepy. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. This guy sli slid into my Pony Express. <laughs> yeah, one of the nurses DMs, received the old DMs. The old DMs. One of the nurses received twelve thousand drawn dick pics. Oh man, are you serious? <laughs> no, <Yeah>. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I wasn't alive back then. Dick pics might have been the norm. That your dick pic was such a thing. You're like, oh man, the I have drawings. to, I have to, I have to sit, I have to sit there and sketch it out and get the right shading. Or you're sitting there in front of one of those smoking cameras that goes. Up. 
And are you just holding there with an erection for 25 minutes or whatever it took? Yeah, that's so, that's so crazy that we don't see, like... There, any of those, there? there have to be. There, there have to there. be those pics of just you've a dude like, with an erection. I've just seen like, porn ah, from that era. I've seen era. old porno from the 1800s seen, or whatever. It's, it's of, amazing. Yeah, I kind of seen that Some of the women are pretty hot, too. And then the dudes look pretty hilarious. Whenever I see that, I'm like, where the fuck did these women do this? Because I, I know how po- be- bad porn was back then. Because, the, well, there was. I think there was more openness to having, like, brothels and stuff like that. Oh, so people, yeah. like, yeah. if you had a camera, I'm sure the, the good first, old days. I'm sure the first right? thing that happened in that is just that you would just be like, oh, sweet, like, cameras are invented. Like, what do I want to photograph? Oh, my God. Let's... Let's take this thing to the to the brothel, uh, that and they makes just sense. start. You know what I mean? Like sex is always on the top of the list for it, at least a high. Well, percentage and of none of those girls are worried about it being up on the internet since there isn't one. So they're like, sure, take a picture of me fucking and show it to the. You can you can at least at most ten people will see it because that's all you can get it to. Uh, a time not for Kim Kardashian, really. Yeah, you, you if you wanted the attention, it wouldn't. It would be so much more work in those days. Shrank remains steadfast in jail calmly explaining def- um, and defending his reasons for the shooting to reporters. I like this guy. It was on Roosevelt for seeking a third term, not him. When he classic discovered... Narciss- Wait, he blamed it on him? Like, I'm classic narcissist. Well, his whole, flip his it whole on thing, the other person. His whole thing was like that he thought that since Roosevelt was seeking... And this is kind of the wishy-washy part. So Roosevelt um, became... So he was, he was, he was nominated... He was uh, uh, appointed vice president when the vice president for McKinley died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he served like... Then McKinley died and he served like a couple of years as president. Then got elected and served that term. So, so that's was, two terms. He wasn't elected twice. He was elected once. Yeah, because so he had like a term and a half, sort of. Well, yeah. So McKinley died like a couple months into his new term. And if you're a vice president and you take over for a president more than two years left, that counts as a full term. So that was his first term. Wasn't elected. Then he got elected a second term. And now then he said so then he took some time off and now Taft he's like, hey, was president. You guys want to elect me again? Yeah. Well, here was the big thing. He took some time off. <laughs> Taft was became president, and Taft mm-hmm. was like his his like he's kind of he groomed Taft. Mm-hmm. Then he didn't like what Taft did as president, so he ran against him in when t- when Taft was the incumbent. And that Wait, was, so he was president, then got out of it, then came back. Then, yeah. decided, then decided to come back because he didn't like I how didn't know you could do the placement was doing. You could back then. There was no official law against. Um, for most of, of American history, there was no official law against the third term. It was just c- custom because um, Washington didn't accept a third term. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it just became like it was like it was like other laws. We're like, well, right. see, in this case, that's yeah. what the way you ruled. know. FDR did four. That's yeah. Roosevelt's cousin. So the Roosevelts have really been like, let's take this power. Yeah. The Roosevelts Maybe they were are like trying the, to do a monarchy. Uh, the Roosevelts were like, if we liked the Clintons, is basically what it was. Yeah. We're, we're, and, the, and then everybody else is like, can you guys just get out of the White House and go do something else now? Pretty but much. they're like, we belong mm-hmm. here. Creeps. Yeah. Oh, no offense if you're a Clinton listening. Or Roosevelt. Or Roosevelt. Even though FDR married his cousin. Weirdos. I mean, Hot that just though. happens. Dude. We all marry our cousins when you think about the DNA, right? <laughs> just I mean, like really I, distant cousins. I guess you're right. So basically, he was saying like that Roosevelt seeking a third term was turning the country into a monarchy. Yeah. And be a whole fucking I can see where that fear comes in. I, it, I just seem like a, a, that's an old school Alex Jones kind of thing where you're like, man, every possible bad thing that can happen, you're like, that's what's happening. Black yeah. helicopters are coming. I got the documents right here to prove it. Roosevelt trying to turn America into a monarchy. They really do argue that stuff now. That's a good Alex That's Jones, one of the conspiracy the theories. That right is true. When you really think about it, the only th- it only really starts getting crazy when it's McKinley's ghost. Other than that, everything else is kind of like a, oh, this is founded in some sort of reality. To be fair, Alex Jones would probably buy the McKinley's ghost part, too. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if McKinley's ghost still haunts Alex Jones. It's Every just, day. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that would buy the McKinley's ghost thing. Black helicopters! Uh, is that one of his famous quotes, black helicopters? Yeah, he says, how about that? FEMA camps. Oh, yeah, FEMA camps. The, the federal yeah. government's trying to encroach on you, and vampires trying to suck the souls out of children. That's what these pedophiles are in Washington. Man, thank God a lot of people listen to them. Yeah, right? right. Like millions. Yeah. Millions and millions. At least they're being paranoid enough to keep an eye on th- stuff, but then it's also just like, I think they might be looking for the wrong stuff. Yeah, one of them is going to try to shoot the president. Yeah. If, wh- what, while you're busy searching for a shapeshifter and planning on shooting the president, yeah. like, we could have just used you like helping figure out... Pretty much Alex Jones is the real-life McKinley's ghost. <laughs> Although he hasn't tried, he hasn't tried <laughs> he to kill anyone. He looks like it. Yeah. As, as far as we know. We as find far as Alex we know. Jones has been trying to kill people. When John discovered that Teddy was still alive, he quietly went back to his cell. Oh, he's all depressed. Oh, the God. next day he just emerged. Just kind of bummed. Everyone's like, what's the matter, John? I'm just kind of bummed. The next day he emerged and demanded that the bullet be returned to him as it was his property. Oh, that's crazy American. This guy was a real damn American. Or just super cheap. Yeah. Uh, just, man, I want my property back. I love that. He's I like, love I want, this he's guy. Like, I want my gun. It's black. my gun I want and my, my bullet. bullet I want back. those back. They're gonna, I'm going to donate them to the National Historical Society. 
Like he had a whole thing. Oh, so he had a full excuse for why mm-hmm. he should have it back. Oh, I love that. When Roosevelt heard the news, Roosevelt was like, "Yeah, oh, fuck it, I'll take it out myself." He pushed but, it out of his chest by going like this, just out of pure willpower. Yeah. He replied that just like a letter, once you send a bullet to someone else, it belongs to them. Oh, oh dude, man, he's like a Churchill kind of fucking. To responses. hit him with a witty one-liner, even if you don't, even if you don't like the guy, his like one-liners are just like, "Oh man, that's a pretty good response." Well, it's it's one thing to get shot by a bullet, but it's one thing to get shot by a bullet and then also keep your like sense of humor going. Just yeah. be like, "Hey, I can still hit you back." I almost wanna... you wanted it so badly, you should have kept it in your gun. Yeah, I don't know if you heard it. When Roosevelt got shot, he was like, oh, you should have taken my wife. Take my wife. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I almost want to put together all of Roosevelt's jokes and go to the comedy store and ask him to put Teddy Roosevelt's name on the wall here. Uh, that... I, I almost want you to do that, but I don't. Go on with the story. Just two weeks later, <laughs> Teddy made his first Ball appearance back buster. in public. As he stood to give a speech, the crowd roared in approval. The cheer went on for 45 minutes before they let him speak. Oh, God. Man. You fucking tools. Get over it. That's how bored people were back then. Yeah. They're like, he's still alive, and let's cheer for people 45 People like coming from minutes. clapping. I'm still Apparently, coming. Apparently, it started to die down at like 25 minutes-ish, and he like banged his fist like a gavel to get everyone to quiet down, and they were like, he banged yeah. his fist. Yeah. And just kept he going bangs. for 20 more he minutes. He bangs. This is not, that's not even the longest applause he ever got. Even before he was shot, people, like, there was one time where people applauded for an hour before they let him speak. Man. Would you, I mean, I guess the first time it happened, you'd be like, wow, this is really cool. I'm probably going to kill. But then you're like, after that, you're like, okay, I, I can't keep coming here early to headline and well, have you wait. Like, the well, audience like, is so beat up by the time I start. Yeah, it was also like. Yeah, they're all tired. It's also like Steve Martin. Like, the reason why Steve Martin quit stand-up is because he couldn't get a genuine reaction out of audience. Yeah. So t- Roosevelt must be like, I don't know if my policies are any good. Yeah. It's like, now that they've seen me, I don't they know. They just think I'm this wild and crazy guy. Dude, they're, they're laughing at everything. I don't, there's no mics for him to test this stuff yeah. out at. Yeah, there's no. On election day. Roosevelt put up the best showing by any third party candidate to this date. Nice. But it wasn't enough. He pulled down 4.1 million votes to Woodrow Wilson's 6.3. Oh, shit. That was close. But Wilson won 40 states and an electoral landslide. Oh. Fucking electoral college. Always with the electoral college. Roosevelt joked that he had gotten more bullets than votes. Man, that's still good. That's, well, keep man, that's fucking good. Really, hashtag I'm, roast culture, right yeah, there. Yeah, really, just giving the snaps up to roast. Guys got right more now. bullets than than votes <laughs> in <laughs> court. <laughs> yeah, folks. Uh, <laughs> John Shrank doubled down on his guilty plea, Fuck claiming yeah, he that did. he did it as a warning to any president seeking a third term. That's my John right there. <laughs> the judge called for a committee of doctors to evaluate his mental state. We got like, where do we, where do how do you find that many gynecologists? That's, uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> for everything. It's just gynecologists. Everything. We do psychologists. I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what what do you do? I'm a gynecologist. All right, step right up. Yeah. When you put your feet in the stirrups, how do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> I think your personality has some form of a uh, yeast infection. In uh, that court, was too far. They that went was over rude. Every People suffer from that. I don't want to make fun of that. I'm sorry, aspect guys. of the assassin, including his giant suitcase of writings. Yes. The doctors concluded that he suffered from insane delusions. What? 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 What, what gave you that idea? Nothing. Just all of his actions. Yes. They're kind of being dicks, really. Yeah. And he was unable to confer with his attorneys or contribute to his own defense. The judge ordered him committed to the Northern Hospital for the Insane. Oh man, he. Did, uh, uh, at no point was he like, I called the ghost of William McKinley to the stand. I knew as his witness? Yeah. Of course. He's like telling his lawyer, like, just call him and this will all be over. Yes. Like the lawyer's like, sir, that's um, in your m- imagination? He was here. The, he, when I came and he told me to write that letter, you talk about that too. But sir, it's a ghost that you're talking about. I don't know if we can uh, have him on the stand. Look, I'm a good guy. Just ask McKinley. The other, the other prosecutor just goes, you know, what? I'll play along. Objection, your honor. Yeah. <laughs> S- sustained. Overruled. I don't know which one means which. I forgot. Uh, John Sustain complained that it. not only was he not crazy, but he had been denied what he called his medicine, meaning his punishment. Wait, what? Yes, that sounds he like... He referred to his, whatever punishment he was supposed to get, that as his medicine. wanted to die. I love him. I love... Out of all the stories I've read of people assassinating people, this guy's the best. He's yeah. insane. Well, he's like kind of the unheralded assassinator, <laughs> because... He's the John Malkovich from Well, he's Crossfire. also good because he failed. Yeah, that's also what makes it easily my favorite. That's why no one, no one like John Flamang Shrank isn't one of those. Also, it's a shitty name too. He he should have had like a better name. It's also that weird time in American history that people don't know a lot about because like no one knows the name Leon Shulgosh, and he sure changed the world by killing McKinley. He made Roosevelt president. Yeah, and I mean Roosevelt completely rewrote the presidency. Oh yeah, he changed American America's future drastically. We uh, we, in a bad way, or I mean what? Well, we used to be before Roosevelt. We used to be more isolationist. Oh, okay. And we used to not be. And then Roosevelt, with with Rose, Ro- Roosevelt pushed us into the Spanish American War. Really, that was him. Yeah. And then that, then as soon as he became president, he started fucking with the Latin American countries. 
It's a speak softly and carry a big stick. So oh, so he's kind of a dick too. Oh yeah, are like, any of these people cool? No. Well, Roosevelt, if the, you're president, Roosevelt you're a bad person. was the first big conservationist the president. Yeah, every president's a bad person. Yeah, that's a, such a shame. Roosevelt did like establish the first big swath of national parks, and he was a big environmentalist yeah. type person. Now, one of the ways he was an environmentalist was he sh- went on safari to Africa and shot eleven thousand animals and had them stuffed and brought back. The teddy bear. Um, yeah. Oh god. Oh yeah, the teddy bear. That's why it's named that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Well, because he wouldn't shoot this bear that they bought a, like a bear cub out for him. He's like, I'm not going to shoot that. There's no sport in it. And they were right. like, they made the, the one animal he didn't kill. They're like, this is something special. He actually hated being called Teddy. He preferred to be called the Colonel. That was like what he went by mm. was the Colonel. Yeah, because that dude loved war. Yeah, he did. That was his thing. Oh my god, How do, I want to respect one of these guys, but they all seem so. Mean. No, they're all bad. They're all a bunch of Moseses. Because think about it, even like even like, they're all a bunch of Moseses. You know, yeah, right? it's like we we remember them like with those nice oil paintings. Like, what a great guy! He did so much, and then you're like, you talk about the details. You're like, he just like he liked to kill a lot of people. When you get into it, right? It's just Obama did all the drone strikes. Bush attacked Kosovo. Not Bush. Clinton attacked Kosovo. They're all Car- bad. Carter was boring. Yes, you know, like. <laughs> Really, Carter. really terrible yeah, stuff. Assholes, Layton. Carter was boring. He didn't graduate college. Guilty Get out of, here. of boredom for the American well, people. Roosevelt you also, Teddy nice. Roosevelt also sort of created the, like, his presidency is what sort of created the modern idea of the president as this very important central American figure. Mm-hmm. Whereas before... He was just the spokesperson? He was the can you hear no, me no, now he was, guy? No, he was still important in terms of his powers. Yeah. But the president wasn't this big focus like we put now. It yeah, was oh, like yeah. The, the, the There's separation. like Beyonce and the president. You're like, geez. The three branches were more equal back yeah, then. Yeah, Or much they more. seemed that way. Because every time like Trump gets stopped now, people are like, oh, j- j- judiciary branch stopped him. People are like a little surprised. But that's how it just always that's used to be. That's how it's be. built. Yeah. For that reason, specifically. But Rose- Roosevelt was such a cur- cult of personality. <laughs> he was he was possibly, for at least a, f- a decade or so, the, first Trump. the most popular person on the planet. Oh, God. He was and, or at least in the Western world. Yeah. Yeah. He but was he, big time. But you said he started a bunch of wars. I mean... Well, the one the one war specifically, he was like a big in like... Spanish-American war? Yes. Yeah. That was our first... One like, of the best ones. That was our first like imperialistic war, and then we just weren't like... Oh, we were like, oh, we can settle into this imperialism. Yeah. Oh, That's us. God, what a shame. We used to not be that. But he had a great mustache, though. What would it have been like? Have would, a would, would we still be here? Like, would America even still be here if we weren't the dicks that we are? Like South Park calls us the, the you know, the dicks. The, Maybe, yeah, I think so. I think eventually, I think World War II would have made us. I don't know, but New Mexico wouldn't have the new in front of it. You know, right. it would just, yeah, that's happen. a good point. It would still be Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. As as John boarded the train to the insane institution, a reporter asked him if he was sane or not. <laughs> just he replied blank. blank. The only thing I have to complain about is that they don't sell bottled beer on this train. Fucking I'm thirsty. Dope. I love him. I can't have... understate. How, I can't overstate how much I think this dude is fucking dope as shit. No back down. Yeah. No, like I was trying to do. No, no. I was like, he hey. didn't even answer the question, did he? Or did he? he? No, he did. He did at some point say like, "Well, they say I'm insane, so it's not doesn't have anything to do with yeah, me." Yeah, it's not my problem. What, what yeah. I want is a beer right now. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I shot the president. Now let me get fucked up. Yeah, it sounds like a sane thing to say, actually. Like I just want a beer. All right, yeah. <laughs> I did what I came to do. That's the most sane thing. McKinley's ghost. You want a Heineken? No, yeah. Right. yeah, John. Can I get two? One for me, one for my buddy. Everyone's like, sure. Okay, here you go. John Flamang Shrank spent 31 John years Flamang. in the mental institution. He and continued to lobby for the return of his bullet and his gun. Duh, fucking, of course, yeah, yeah, John. Definition do it. of insanity. They're in not. Ni- they're not going to bring you the bullet, dude. In 1999 but or I'll 1919, sorry, in 1919, Roosevelt passed away. When Shrank heard the news, he replied that he admired his greatness. Oh, at that, yeah, at that point, that's two enemies that respect each other. You yeah. can't. You can't have. Even if you shoot the guy, you're like, yeah, it's, I, I mean, respect it's, him. it's Professor X and Magneto. That's exactly what it is, right? He passed. Except- uh, Shrank passed away of pneumonia in 1943 at the age of 67. When no one claimed... Was he still in the mental hospital yes. that time? Okay, so he stayed the rest of his life he spent in the mental hospital. Yeah. No, he never had a single visitor. Never received a single letter. Well, he didn't have to when your ghost buddy can be there all the time. What yeah, you, he was, yeah, I was going to say, a drop-dead friend me are hanging out all day. Why, why worry about other mm-hmm. visitors, right? When but, no one claimed his body... It was sent to Marquette University in Milwaukee for an where autopsy? it was dissected by medical students. And he had, by, he had just a different. room full of gynecologists. Yeah, just, yeah. 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 But did they find something weird in his brain? We I mean, know. it was just medical students doing like, hey, here's what we'll, we'll play with it. Where's his chest pussy? Yeah. <laughs> his chest pussy. They're like, as you can see here, here his, here's his fourth vagina. <laughs> every, just every doctor's dumb. Like, that's the, that's the universe we've crossed into. All every, doctors are dumb. Every gynecologist just doesn't know what's going on. It's a parallel dimension. Everything else is the same as the one you're from, except for all doctors are gynecologists, and they're, they're really, really stupid. They're really stupid. When all you have is a dick, everything's a hammer. Or a pussy. Oh yeah! Well, that, fuck! I almost oh, had yeah, fucked it up. Dude. Everything's a hammer. Don't worry, Rich. You can edit that part when out. All you, yeah, hold on. <laughs> when all you have is a dick, 
everything's a pussy. Oh man, nice on the first shot too. Yeah, yeah. that was a really good riff right yeah. there in front of us. Just on time. If, if you're landed. listening, this guy is on fire. Landed it. Landed it, dude. You really did. Um, yeah. So basically, this guy had a rough childhood, as mm-hmm. every criminal does. Is there any criminals that have a good childhood? No, they always have a fucking awful childhood. I bet the Menendez brothers had dope childhood. Probably. I don't think so. I think they 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 had to uh, wait. Didn't they, didn't their dad rape them or something like that? They had a horrible time. Oh, maybe. Yeah, and just because you had a bunch of go karts and whatever balloons you want at your birthday party doesn't mean you still had a good childhood. You might, you know, point. it takes a good connection with your parents. I take right? a dick for a go kart. You take a dick for a go kart. Your dad's like dick still or yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You gotta you gotta add that aspect. Yeah. To yeah, it. yeah it's does. not just any dick. It's yeah. your dad's dick. I'm talking about like yeah, a, sh- a sugar things. daddy or your actual dad. That's the different. Thank you for pointing that out. Too. Yeah, almost, that's what I'm here for. I almost yeah. let him have that, and then uh, thank God, your son's got logic. logic. Correspondent, got yeah. Logic. Yeah. yeah, we need that logic to be like that's a little that's a horse of a different color, if you will. Yeah. So this guy had a bad childhood. Yeah. Grew up, lost. Uh, was doing well for a while. It seemed like he had lost an okay childhood that for that time period. Oh, who's everyone's parents died at that time, right? So it was just like, eh. yeah. I mean, he he got to America, and there were people waiting for him. He didn't just that's like get thrown point. into the street. That's a yeah. very fair point. Assuming that they are, they food. had a job ready Ass- for him. Assuming, tw- like, assuming that when you when you read that, that that's really what happened. Those, those people that were there for him were cool. Like for all you know, they're like the evil step ants or whatever. You know. Well, here's the like, lucky part. You're here now to get to work. We have thousands of pages of his writing that were able to be used to build the story of him. Yeah, yeah I want to read his poems now. That's what's really good. I, what I like, stuff. I was telling someone about this Roosevelt story probably like a couple days ago. Really recently, I was telling someone about this story and to know that the guy who shot him was so cool. Yeah. So true. <laughs> true. <laughs> was so, like, it's like as, a, like, as a man, like, it's hard sometimes to stick to your principles. Yeah. But he was like... One of the greats. Yeah, like that's a that's a fucking real man right there. He was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I tried to kill the president. Give me my fucking beer. Yeah, I want a beer. Yeah, give me my beer. I want my bullet back. Yeah, I want the bullet back. I'm taking my bullet and I'm going home. You I guys want, aren't playing the way I want. I it. want the bullet back to send to a museum too. Just like, hey, I know yeah, how yeah. I know how important this bullet is. He yeah. wants to make sure that he can have his name on the plaque. Yeah, yeah. Right, McKinley's ghost. I wonder if anyone's ever tried to break into the Teddy Roosevelt's grave and steal the bullet. It's probably already been. It's yeah, it's probably. What are you gonna do with that bullet? Somebody has it. Someone has it. Someone has. It. It's on some family. Mantelpiece. The Rothschilds right have yeah, it like on, yeah. their, on their man- mantelpiece. They're like, this is from one of our one of our uh, representatives. It's just shown. it's actually just in the situation room at the White House, and every new president they just pull back and show him that bullet. Yeah, and you're never go, gonna be this much of a man. Are you just carry- close it? Are you carrying a 50 page speech? No. Okay, do your yeah, job as get a teller. writing. Yeah, yeah, it really, really puts Obama's teleprompters into perspective. <laughs> of just like, man, Obama, <laughs> his teleprompters are giant. They're like 10 foot by 10 foot, yeah. uh, see through uh, glass, uh, bulletproof glass. Well, yeah, wouldn't have, wouldn't have, would they have stopped the bullet? Barack Obama has the Probably. first steel teleprompters. I think the way yeah. that they do it now, they they make sure that like it's so safe for them before they enter an area that like you wouldn't be in close enough range. Probably, I think that's how they do it. Probably. Yeah, because there were some pretty good assassination attempts in the eighties. Like it's not like it stopped. Well, Hinckley was the last one, right? Who tried? Who shot Reagan? Yeah, I'm saying that's the eighties. It's not that long ago. Over Jodie Foster too. Yeah. Wait, what? Well, that's why. That's why he shot Reagan. He wanted to impress Jodie Foster. It's such an odd way to try to impress Jody Foster. Like, hey, man. People try to be really creative. But, but hey, you know you know how it is with women, man. You got to try it at least once. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you got to see what sticks. You got to find your thing, you know? Because <laughs> what if that worked? He's like, oh, but, well, if I want to get pussy, I got to assassinate world leaders now. Like, that's, you know, you got to find your lane. I once peed on a guy to impress Charlize Theron. So, you know. <laughs> first, as long of as all, we're... first of all, I believe the first half of that. Yeah, the first but half the is true. the motive is totally The different. first half is very true. <laughs> oh, man. Second half, totally Do not. you have a crush on Th- Charlize Theron? No, the first half was the peeing on a guy. But do you have a crush on Charlie Theron? Not really. Okay. But I mean, I would like to impress her. Yeah. I don't have a crush on her, but that doesn't mean I would like, like to impress If you her. told me that peeing on a guy would impress Charlie Theron, I would, I would do it. Probably do it, yeah. Why not? It would impress Charlie's Theron. It would, yeah. That's, that's if, it. If that, was, if, the, if that was the parameters. Yeah, I can and if impress that were. Charlie's Theron with no cost to me? Yeah. What? Other than other than you have to drink another bottle of water. What's the downside, John? Touche. You guys win. Order, yeah, that order we do. in the courts. That's what I thought. The 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 ruling goes in favor of you guys, and I guess I wouldn't impress Charlie's Theron. Today's sources include a bunch of shit that I didn't write down because I was so trying to get the door for this podcast. But I will list them. Maybe I'll I'll link them in the in our Instagram. I'll put the sources there. Yeah. But there's some really good sources. Kind of the usual ones. There's a great book, something about Theodore Roosevelt and his assassin, something like that, is what it's called. Also, of course, the evil robots. 
at Wikipedia. Wikipedia yes. Oh, nice. Horrible, evil robots. But I feel bad for not rem- not writing the sources down today. No, you should feel real bad. You should be guilty. You should really feel bad about this. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal, dude. You're going to put it in the in the crime thing. Stop being an old Stop Jewish Stop it, lady. McKinley. I tried to write him down. Oh, that he was... Just, he won't leave me alone, man. So man. McKinley hunts, haunts your, He's your brain, He's always dude. there when I come. It's the worst. McKinley? Yeah. Yes, come on. Uh, McKinley! Yes! God. Let's keep coming. Jesus, why'd you have to get shot? Yes, yeah, go smoke a bowl. Try for another round. Like, dude, can you please keep... A, I'm trying to concentrate and finish right now. Just like, just stay quiet until I come. Right. Yes, good God. You're almost there. No, no, come on, dude. I have to start over now that you You're keep on talking. You're almost there. Stroke faster. God damn it. Just... Stroke faster. Oh, my God. This now is not stop working. and don't come. This is not working at Tease all. Tease yourself. Yeah, that's working. I'm not coming anymore. Now, now, get back to it. Start a rhythm again. I'm I'm going soft, really. Asan, where can people find you? Um, you will. You can find me on Instagram at Asan JB Ahmad. Oh, it's a good Instagram too, E-H- if I might add. Oh, it is a dope Instagram. Yeah, I think good so pictures. Too. Yeah, good E H S A N J B A H M A D. Uh, when is this coming out? Do you know? Eventually. Eventually. Well, if it's before June twelfth, I'll be uh, featuring at the Madhouse for nice. Gareth Reynolds, and. As of right now, uh, well, if this comes out before August 16th and you're in Central Missouri, I'll be at Central Missouri University at the yeah. student orientation. So come hang out with a bunch of freshmen, you creepos. Yeah. yeah that sounds great. Yeah, that's where you're going to meet your 17-year-old German factory worker girl. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm looking for, my that's 17-year-old German factory worker girl. Follow the show on the socials German. at CrimePod, both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, also, you can email the show, crimepodcast at gmail.com. Send us any story ideas, questions you have, dick pics, label it for John. Whatever you're into, really. It's totally fine. He loves the dick pics. Yeah, that's what he's, so all he's about. telling me. Yeah. Okay. This is, I don't love dick pics. Loves them. If you have a painting of a dick or an old school, if you, it, actually, you know what? If you find an old school picture, like we were just talking about, like a 1900s, like. Yeah, if you, find a, if you find a 1900s dick pic, also send it to send me. It. You have my Instagram. I want to know. <laughs> Yeah, and if there's one in it, just crop them DM. out and get, just zoom right in on the dick, and then yeah, so Slate does it everything. I'll be okay with him. that. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's what good. it's all about. Thanks for listening, fellas and ladies. Thank you Bye. so much, Bye, robot. Bye, guys.